Dear respect to the brothers and elders. <clears throat> Hi. Hi, have you heard of the Shamima Begum news in the news? No. Okay, so some of you have. That's not going to be the focus of my topic, but it's something that will lead off from this. We were following some other bayans, but this is something which I feel is important to talk about uh, because obviously, as Muslims, sometimes we can fall into the negative propaganda and also fall into making mistakes. Look, let me make it very clear. I am not in support of anyone who does wrong in the name of Islam. In Islam, we have certain extremist groups like Khawarij Mu'tazila. In the, the Prophet وسلم, referred to them as Kilabu Hadihi Al Ummah. These people are like, they're from the Ummah, but they're like the dogs of the Ummah. This is what he said in a hadith. And for something like that to come from the Prophet is quite intense. Because he was Rahmatullah Alameen. You don't find he was, never, he was never rude, never swore, but he referred to them as the like. Because, and also he mentions that these people, Badahid, you look at them, it will seem that you know, they're so practicing and so religious, but their, their deen is corrupt. And that's what we find. You know, unfortunately, when we, we, we see, see a certain groups, especially Allah forbid, but we see this sort of extremism that exists in certain regions of the world. And alhamdulillah, look, Islam is, not, Islam is not like that at all. We're not going to be a very... Look, let me make this very, very clear. I'm going to make this very clear. And I'm, we're not apologetic. There is such a thing as jihad. There is. Okay? But there, it's not like everyone should just... It's not anarchy where everyone's picking up, firing, and astaghfirullah. No. There's whole rules, regulations, conditions, sharait. It's extremely, extremely strict. So we're not going to deny it, okay? Because then we're going to deny a very important part of our faith. But at the same time, when we see of things, especially for example now, people claiming Iraq and so on, that, that we've got an Islamic caliphate, not everything that claims to be Islamic is generally Islamic. Okay, keep that in mind. So we, here we have, we've got a young girl who left England at the age of 15, decides to go abroad. I don't support the organization. These people are wrong. They, they cause fitna and fasad. Well, fitna do akbaru min al-qatl. You know, ashaddu min al-qatl. Well, fitna do akbaru min al-qatl. That fitna and fasad is worse than killing, you know. So these people were creating fitna across the globe, especially where, you know. And then the amount of, in, even in here in, in UK, where the backlash has been, where they've claimed certain attacks and so on. Innocent people, subhanAllah. So there's no space for that in our deen. But here we've got a young 15-year-old girl that basically goes abroad and then basically chooses to join an organization, which, yes, even the Muslims, we don't agree with such people. But the, how does that leave this one girl? Okay, like I said, it's a political issue, so I'm not, I don't want to get into a whole political thing. Obviously, now I've got my own view, what should happen, should she return, shouldn't she return, and so on. I think, in all fairness, that because if, she poses a, if she's broken a law, then trial her for her crimes. But if we start getting into this business of snatching people's citizenships away, then there's no door that, you know, then that opens up a very, very ugly and dark door. Okay, especially when she hasn't got dual nationality anyway. Like I said, look, that's, that's to the side. That's not the main focus of my subject. Okay, what is was I was watching something on online, online and this is what got me to think about what to talk about. Underneath you have Muslims commenting. A Muslim commented this thing, subhanAllah. Well, they had a name Muslim, okay? And I've heard this before from certain Muslims. They did this. They, 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 this is what they wrote. England, Muslims, happy. The, no, sorry, a big point, other way around. Afghanistan, Muslims, there's war. Pakistan, this problem. Bangladesh, this problem. Syria, this problem. Egypt, this. all Muslim countries where Muslims are happy, and then it had England, USA, Australia, Spain. So can you see what in that person's mind was? If you're coming from a region where it's Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Syria, Egypt, so on, then there's facade in these countries. The only place Muslims are really happy are in Western countries. You know, and I think to myself, subhanAllah, that's a very bold statement to make firstly. Like, you make to, uh, to think and assume that everyone is happy here and no one's happy abroad. That's a false notion, firstly, because you're judging it through your lens of how you see the world, of having a very fast car, living in a house, and, you know, being able to go to your local town centre where you can bl lavishly spend money. They have happiness in a different way. It doesn't mean that they have to have the same things you have to be happy. Okay, one thing. But the second thing was this. Which is a problem, is that Muslims generally fall into this, isn't it? Muslims fall into this mindset that non-Muslim countries have everything and we are void of everything. This is, wallah, the most stupidest thing anyone can ever think of. 
Because the most valuable thing Allah has given us is Iman, Allahu Akbar. That's the most valuable thing. Beyond that, there is no better thing. Okay, let me ask you like this. Would you rather be a Muslim and die poor or be rich and die a non-Muslim? You ask to answer the question. I don't know. I don't know what's in your brain. If you can have all the wealth of the world one side and be void of Iman, void of faith, void of anything like that, and then on one side, live a very meager life, if you want to call it that, okay? A simple hand-to-mouth life. But alhamdulillah, you're breathing, living and breathing Tawheed and Risala and you're thinking of Akhirah. I don't know where you are. I'll choose the second one personally. I'd rather have less, knowing that I've got Akhirah, than have a lot and have no Akhirah whatsoever. We have a lot of people like this. Because they came here, they made morning, noon and night one. All their maqsad was just to earn money. And we see those children in our communities. You know, we see them. You talk to them about Islam and they think of it as something alien. A Pakistani guy in my local area called me. He had some family members. He goes, I want you to meet these youngsters. So, okay, I said, okay, TK, I'll come. He's saying, you know, give them some nasiha and some dawah and so on. So I said, okay, TK, we'll come. Okay, so we walk into the house, right? Because they're his local, they're his relatives that come from a neighboring town. They're here for a couple of hours. Why don't you come by? So I said, okay, I'll go inside. So when we go inside, subhanAllah, I mean, you know what it is, is that I don't, I'm not a judgmental person. Okay, I'm not a judgmental person. But if you're, even if you're coming to see your, your own family members, you would think to the girl, she would at least dress semi-decent. Well, where's the father? The, 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 you know, where's the father? Didn't he even think to himself, tell the daughter, just, just dress a bit. You were going around other people's houses and so on. Subhanallah, like during like strapped dresses and things like that. Like, look, again, subhanallah, I'm not here to rub man's face in dirt, you get me? But, you know, this is what we're seeing. We're seeing Asian women walking with their salwar kameez and their dabatta around their gala. And their daughter's wearing Ugg boots, tight tops and jeans. Bruv, what is going on? What's going on with our culture of people? What's going on with the Muslims' mentality? So, deen is just in Bangladesh. Deen is just in Pakistan. When we come here, it gets thrown out the window as soon as we arrive at customs. What? So, deen is not applicable. Brother, deen is applicable everywhere. You haven't, you haven't got to be extreme. Why do people always have to think of the negative for? Deen is to make your life beneficial. I say, the English people, wallah, they've got some fantastic qualities. Take the good qualities and bring those in your countries. Transparency, the honesty of dealings, the, you know, like for example, the timekeeping. Subhanallah, there are so many good qualities we can learn from these people. When I say these people, it's in the wider community of people, otherwise I'm half God on myself. So it's half my family if you want to go like that. Okay? But what I'm trying to say is, is that generally we have people that come here. What's the first thing our youngsters do? They get into alcohol, drugs, zina. These are the first things they do. These things never benefit anybody. Why not take the good sifat, the good qualities, and use those? Take your people out of darkness and bring them to somewhere where they can at least do something of this dunya. You know, so why is it we've always got to go down bhagarti every time we want something? So I saw, I saw this comment, I was like scratching my head thinking, hold on a second, that's a, bit of a, that's a low blow. But secondly, okay, let's analyze this. First and foremost, Remember one thing, hadith, Anas radiallahu anhu mentions hadith, it can be found in Sahih Muslim. Inna Allah la yadhlimu mu'minan, mu'minan hasanatan. Allah Ta'ala will never wrongfully, will never oppress anyone, never shortchange any believer, even one hasana. Listen carefully, Allah won't shortchange even one good deed. If you do a neki, you're going to get it in this dunya, trust me. What is that? Yu'ta biha fi dunya wa yujza biha fil akhirah. Because of that good deed you do, Whatever the shape or form, namaz, roza, zakat, hajj, sadaqah, lillah, shillah, whatever. Whatever you do good, you're going to see a badla in this dunya. You're going to see a return. And what you biha fil akhirah. And you're going to get a return in the akhirah. That's our iman. I take comfort from this hadith. Do you know why? Because I'm, obviously I'm working, I'm in one of those capacities. I get a lot of phone calls. People phone me up, well, no, no, I've got a problem. Well, no, no, I've got a problem. To that person, it seems I finally plucked up the courage to speak to Molana. Bruv, you're the only person, you're the one person. Did you see my missed calls? I've got two other missed calls just in the last hour, the same issue. We get bombarded, trust me. And it's like, for me, I, I, what it is, because we're not charging by the hour, okay? So for us, it seems like the person's only taking 10, 15 minutes. What then I realize is ten, five to 10 people like this a day, that's two to three hours. I don't see anybody giving two to three hours for free. They're gonna say, bro, time is money, bro. Time is money. Well, so only Molvies are gonna give it for free. 
So I take comfort from this hadith, knowing that, okay, you're not giving me nothing, it's fine. But I know this much, my Allah is not a zalim. In Allah la yudhlimu mu'minan hasanatan. Yujza biha fi dunya, wa yujza biha, yu'ta biha fi dunya, wa yujza biha fi al-akhirah. I will definitely get something in dunya, and akhirah wa tuhih. Akhirah is there. So we all need to think a bit like this, okay? Just because you're not getting recognition for your good deeds and so on, you will get a good deed in this dunya, and in the akhirah you'll get ajr as well. What about someone who doesn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَأَمَّا الْكَافِرْ فَيُطْعَمُ بِحَسَنَاتِ مَا عَمِلَ بِهَا لِلَّهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَتَّى إِذَا أَخْضَى إِلَى الْآخِرَ لَمْ يَكُنْ حَسَنَا يُجْزَى بِهَا Okay, now basically, right? It mentions in regards to that person who doesn't believe. What will they get? Whatever good deeds they did in this worldly life, they will be given the badala of that here. So when they go to the akhirah, when they go to the akhirah, لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ حَسَنَةً يُجْزَى بِهَا There is nothing left for Allah to give back to that person. Allah gave it to you in dunya. You've had it now. Bas. When we look toward the ahwal in the dunya, but let's be honest. More alcohol drunk here or Bangladesh? Are you from Bangladesh, right? Is there more alcohol here or Bangladesh? Much more here. Much more. More zina here or abroad? Where? Here. More drugs here or abroad? Depending on the country, of course. If you're from Colombia, bro, that's some next level. But generally speaking, here a lot more. But why still so much Allah is giving? Couple of reasons. Adal insaf, the people are just. When akhlaq is good, Allah gives. Because Allah's, look, look at this, subhanAllah. Fir'aun, someone like Fir'aun, Allahu Akbar. Someone like Fir'aun. Allah Ta'ala made it such that he didn't even suffer from headaches. He didn't even feel discomfort or illness. Only, and what did he used to claim? Ana rabbukum al-a'la. I am God Almighty. Me, I am God. I am the biggest God. Worship me. That's what he used to say. Allah said, let it go. It's okay. It's okay. Because why? He did, he did, he did adal and justice to his ra'iyya. He did adal and justice to his people. When he started killing and slaughtering Bani Israel, that's when Allah Ta'ala sent azab. Okay, now you're doing zulm upon people. Ours is flipped. We got a lot of good mashallah, a lot of masjids, a lot of madaris, but how a hukuk al ibad non existent. Here, there is no good deeds in that sense, but there's hukuk al ibad. Allah Ta'ala is giving. One reason. Second reason, there will be no excuse left for anybody. Allah will give all hasanat here, all, everything here. Taqi akhira, there's nothing. And this is why we see from Muslims, it's a sabaq to learn. Whenever we do something to displease Allah, we're going to suffer for it here, and we're going to suffer for it in the akhirah. Okay? But what happens is, is that because of disobeying Allah, we, we, we believe in Allah. We believe in Allah. You do good, you're going to get a good reward. If we do wrong, Allah will... Allah Ta'ala will sometimes test us with small things, so He can save us from the fire of Jahannam and the akhirah. So what happens? We then go through ahwal. That's why we see things in countries abroad. This country, that country, this turmoil, that turmoil. More, not more bad things are happening there than here. It's just because they're Muslim, they should know what's right and wrong. That's why Allah Ta'ala then punishes them for their wrong deeds. In this very dunya. So you see, this is why, right? To have this notion that, you know, subhanAllah, Muslims are sad here, they're sad here, they're sad here, but they're happy. You know, subhanAllah, they're happy in, 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 for example, France, they're happy in Spain, they're happy in America, but they're sad in Afghanistan, they're sad in Saudi, they're sad in Bangladesh. No, I'm sorry. First of all, sadness and happiness is not on what you think sadness and happiness is, number one. Number two, this is an excuse for Allah Ta'ala to give in this worldly life. Akhirah is mahroom. No one gets akhirah except for those who believe in la ilaha illallah. So as Muslims, we need to get out of this mentality of always, subhanAllah, thinking, just, like, if people have this thinking, if you're, like, even now you have like, Pakistan, right, it's so-called, it's not, it's not Muslim country, it's a country where Muslims happen to live, okay? This whole notion that uh, we, we're a secular country. Bruv, what was the country supposed to be founded on? It was supposed to be founded on Islam, right? And now people are saying, Islam is holding us back. So in essence, you're saying, let's start selling more alcohol, let's start selling more drugs, let's start having, having open zina everywhere. What, that's what makes everyone secular? What, that's what makes us secular? That's what's going to make us calm up, that's what's going to make us successful? Let me make it very clear. If someone wants to do that, that's their business. 
I'm not here to shove my deen down your throat. La ikraha fi deen. It's no compulsion in religion. I think I've got a stance. I think I'm doing the right thing. If you think you are, lakum deenukum waliya deen bai. You do what you want to do, I'm going to do what I want to do. But this notion in thinking, that Islam is holding us back. Deen is holding us back. Islam is going to bring us, subhanallah, Islam came to liberate people, Allahu Akbar. It didn't make us slaves. So you see, our whole understanding of Islam has got to change. It's a long bayan, man. I've got to stop anyways. Okay, but like this much I will say, maqsad is, never look at just what we see in the dunya. There is also akhirah. This is what the... This is what the um, Subhanallah, that Sahabi, he, he, went to, he went to in the court of, of Rustam and he mentioned these things, he, he said, why have you come to us? Why? Why have you come to us kings and leaders of Persia? We've got some, what do you want from us? He said, we've come to you, why? لِنُخْرِجَكُمْ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ الْعِبَادِ إِلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ رَبِّ الْعِبَادِ مِنْ ذِيقِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَىٰ سَعَةِ الْآخِرَةِ We've come to take you, you out of the worshipping of man to the worship of Allah and we've come to take you out of the tangi, the narrowness, the tightness of this dunya and take you to the vastness of the akhirah. مِنْ, دو, من, من جَوْرِ الْأَدْيَانِ إِلَىٰ إِلَىٰ عَدْلِ الْإِسْلَامِ We want to take you out of the injustices of man-made faiths to the justice and adl of Islam. We need to avert our nazar time to time by sub. And don't fall into the whole propaganda. Give vaki. She wants to come back, that means that everything is better there, you know, and, and rubbish there, and everything's better here. Okay, for, again, for me, it's home. And we're not thinking that. But to, 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 to deny akhirah and think, subhanAllah, Islam is the cause of the problem. Islam is what is bringing us down. La ilaha illallah. What did the Prophet say? He came with deen to liberate us, to give us, subhanAllah, a backbone, Allahu Akbar, to give us some gharat, deeni gharat at least. May Allah give us understanding, inshallah. It's a long topic, a delicate topic. Look, I say this much straight and forward, of course, and I, I finish off on this. If someone has done something wrong, legally, trial them, put them in jail if they've done wrong. That's what my khulasa is, and I'm tying it up with my first statement. If someone does wrong, you live here on aman, you live here on an agreement. If you've broken the law, you, 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 you are liable to go prison, pay fines and the likes. But to just strip people, that's what I'm against, because this becomes a very, very big issue. Anyway, may Allah give us true understanding, inshallah, and give us the ability to show Islam in the best way, wallah. To show Islam in the best way. There's no point telling people you're Muslim. Show them you're Muslim. Allah give us tawfiq.